Foot Clan. Today we are going over a lot of matchups, but we have starts of the week, probably the best starts of the week that we have ever had, and we're calling our shot on some people that are going to take you to fantasy titles this year. Hey, Foot Clan, I want to invite you to become a member of our listener community and receive some awesome perks, including an extra episode, forum access, Leagues, game day alerts, premium stats, tons more. We just added a strength of schedule report. We've got consistency charts and a whole lot more. You can check it out at jointhefoot.com. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Coming to you from pristineauction.com studios with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. It's football time. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> so it is. So it is. Welcome in. Uh, since the, the the reveal of the, the true lyrics. To the Thursday episode? To the to the, the, the Thursday episode. The, the What a lot of people don't know is like Tuesday has different lyrics. I just have them brought him up yet until hmm. tuesday night football comes out well no it's, i'm a i'm a poet and i'm not ready to bear those oh, it's emotions like a, it's an art thing yeah so uh, okay they may or may not come out but now just so excited for the next time the podcast is live oh and, and, and everyone's just getting screaming so, screaming as football time followed by the haze oh, that would be and great. jason's high kicks that'll be happening. oh my kicks they're gonna be to the, the moon. highest <laughs> You've been, I mean, you've been working out well over a year now and stretching your hamstring every single time. Has not made a difference. <laughs> I know. I, I know. Mean, my hamstrings. It. I can't touch my knees. That's how. That's how far I can get. Would your trainer feel exceptionally guilty if, after a year and a half, that you finally get a note from the doctor like this man has no hamstrings? I think he would feel better <laughs> about his, I think, his success. I think he would say. <laughs> Thank goodness, because I was like, this was what? embarrassing for me. <laughs> what is going on? Why can't this guy ever stretch his hamstrings? <laughs> yeah, I mean, every time he tells you the same thing, no, 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 straighten the leg. And you're yeah. like, this is not like I can straighten my leg <laughs> when you're when standing. I'm standing or <laughs> laying flat. My, I can get oh. my leg straight, but. Not when you ask me to move my leg at the hip. <laughs> <laughs> we do have Thursday night football. Now, they'll eventually – they they quit on the Thursday night football at some point before the that's, season's over. So that's true. So, football time, just count your blessings. You got it right now. There's only a few remaining. <laughs> that's right. You can uh, follow the show on Instagram, instagram.com slash fantasyfootballers. Appreciate everybody supporting the show, subscribing, the reviews. They help out a lot. You can listen on Apple Podcasts, on Spotify. You can listen ad-free on Stitcher Premium. We just had the Blitz, the newsletter go out today, the five biggest stories in fantasy football hitting your inbox. You can check that out on the website as well. Here's your quick question for the day before we get into fantasy forecast, starts of the week, the boom, boom kicker, and some news. Here's the quick question. Who is an under-the-radar or underrated fantasy player that could end up on a majority of title-winning teams this season. Uh, I'll uh, I'll jump right in. It's a guy I, I talked about a little bit yesterday. I'm going to talk about him a lot more today. But I really love Philip Lindsay going forward. If you look at the remaining schedule on the season, not just playoffs, but the entire rest of the season, the number one Best matchup, strength of schedule-wise, for running backs is the Denver Broncos. And what we saw coming out of their bye was they said it's going to be the Philip Lindsay show. It was. He got 16 carries against a tough Minnesota Vikings defense. But from here on out, the toughest matchup that they have is actually this week against Buffalo. And that's, that's a plus matchup for a running back in general. They've got the Chargers, the Texans, the Chiefs, and the Lions – to finish out the season, that is just such a good stretch run, and I think it's going to coincide with the exact same time where he's getting the ball. Right now, while he's been in a 50-50 timeshare, he's the running back 14. He's not been bad. He's he's pretty nor, good. Nor was he bad in this Vikings matchup. He was 16 for 67. That's 4.2 a carry. Freeman had half the amount of carries, and if you go back to October, it was 50-50. Yeah, I mean, you just look at the snap percentages. I'll bring them up later. Spoiler 
Philip Lindsay is my start of the week. Seems. This is my start of the rest of the season. I was gonna say, wow. I I really do like Philip Lindsay the rest of the way. I'll be surprised if he's if from here on out he's not a top twelve back. All right, Mike, who do you got? All right, it, as I was trying to figure out the answer to this question, one you already know it, we've been because we've been talking about Devonte Parker is just sneakily going to end up being one of these league winning guys, and I, I we got to we got to take this up a notch. Oh man, got to take it up a notch. And I was reminded of a few years ago when it was Blake Bortles season, oh, and yeah. he was. There was the uh, either the semis or the championship week where he was my uh, my stream and my start. Like everything, I went fully into Blake Bortles because he was playing San Francisco at the time, and then and then things started out horrifically bad, and then it turned into 380 passing yards, two touchdowns, 31 rushing yards, and Blake Bortles totally came through and won people championships from the waiver wire, and. Look, you can't have Devontae Parker without Fitz Magic, whose whose schedule is equally as juicy. The Jets, the Giants, and the Cincinnati Bengals, 14 through 16. Look for Ryan Fitzpatrick to, or I should say, hopefully you do not see him opposing you. Well, you you roll into the championship week, you got your stacked roster, you look over at your lowly opponent who's got two Miami Dolphins, you and you laugh. And hopefully you will be the one laughing last because you may not. I feel like the Ryan Fitzpatrick, when you look at the consistency chart for him on the season, I'm picturing a uh, you've got a, an open field and you tell somebody that there's a treasure out there. there there's two treasures. It's like the movie and the Holes. Re- and the rest, they're, they're landmines mm. all over the field. Now go dig up something. Sure. Because two times this year he has been a top 10 quarterback. So, Mike, the pride that you'd be – the amount of ridicule you could bestow upon your opponent if you won a fantasy playoff matchup with Ryan Fitzpatrick. Just just saying get ready for it. And the truth is people don't think you're going to be stuck in that position, but you don't know what injuries may come about. Yeah, Matthew hopefully. Stafford owners all of a sudden had to play Jeff Driscoll. Hopefully you don't have to endure the, the tilt and the panic and the hot sweats that will shortly come from starting – Ryan Fitzpatrick. In that's any- on the back of the prescription bottle for <laughs> Ryan Fitzpatrick. Side effects <laughs> the, may include the end of the commercial. That's right. <laughs> it's a really long list. Yeah, yeah. But just, just saying, look out. But that's like when you don't have insurance. Like if you got insurance, you've just got Lamar Jackson. But it's like yeah. I'm, I'm uninsured right now. I've got to get the generic, you know, off the counter stuff with all the terrible side of that's Fitzpatrick yeah I'll just take that uh, the, the back of the bottle for Josh Rosen is much worse yeah let's put it that way you know you got to go out of country for Josh Rosen <laughs> that's just the, I think those pills are called cyanide <laughs> those, oh. those dude they don't have a they don't have a positive effect <laughs> there is no there's no <laughs> efficacy all right Baker Mayfield is the name I'm going to bring up and I say underrated at this point because or maybe properly rated I don't know who knows Baker has been bad for fantasy owners he was drafted everywhere. People wanted the next Patrick Mahomes season. They did not get it. However, weeks 14 and 15, it's Cincinnati at home, and then it's in Arizona. And Arizona is ble- – they just gave up the two biggest games of Jimmy Garoppolo's career fantasy-wise. They, they gave up the first. They went to the drawing board. They said, we can't let this happen again. And then two weeks later, they gave up the second. Because they don't fix problems. And we're out here in Phoenix, and the one thing that's wrong about their defense is not that they don't have athletes. It's that they don't apparently know how to game plan or recognize things on the field. That's why we can joke about the tight end scoring every time on them and make fun of it, and then their defensive coordinator can say, yeah, we we know that, we're going to stop it, and then nothing happens. And then some dude named Dwelly yeah. off mm-hmm. the street scores two touchdowns. A double I, Dwelly. I, I honestly believe this is going to be the only week all season where the tight end does not perform well against Arizona. Outside of that, I think the rest of the season they will. So Cincinnati, they're Arizona, on. weeks 14 and 15. Did they're, I not pick up on a joke there? Yeah, they're on by. Oh, okay. That's it. Yeah, I get it. It, was, it, was pr- it wasn't good. So this week, odds are lower, but they could still odds give up a touchdown. I to think the tight in end. practice, they're going to get torched by tight end. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's why they signed Max Williams to a two year extension, because every practice, they're like, this dude is <laughs> awesome. <laughs> He's so good. Sign him now. Who, who wrote Beanie Season is Here? 
Did somebody write that in? I didn't, but I fully I approve. Brooks Brooks wants to let everyone know. Now Mike's got the beanie on today, mm-hmm. which really is pure Mike form. This yes. is this is the Mike right. This is my final form. This yeah. is because <laughs> it kind of helps you look hoodie like and a, a beanie. You've always been like a uh, a homeless hipster. <laughs> you know what I mean? Sure. And so I think that's a that's good fine. look. <laughs> All right. Well, that'll do it for the quick quick question. Let's go ahead and jump into the news. <laughs> news and notes from around the league presented by Sleeper. <laughs> what did I say? I, I, we're going to do what? Nobody knows. <laughs> the news. Come on now and jump into the news. <laughs> About a car named uh, Scooby-Doo. All right. <laughs> the Steelers are reporting Juju Smith's Smith Schuster not expected to play in week 12 against the Bengals. Deontay Johnson is still in the concussion protocol. He at this point, Johnson did practice in full. He just on needs Wednesday. to be cleared. Then. I, so. I still don't think he's cleared. I, you got, you get a concussion. The man ble- was bleeding from the bleeding ear. Bleeding from the ear. How can you clear him to go out there and have full contact the next week? That's a fair point. I think Vance McDonald is sneaky in this game. Cincinnati is such a good matchup. And how, how sneaky? Extremely sneaky. Mm, like, we should talk about him later. Like oh, about really? Him later. Oh, yes. Oh, a little. It's time to do the dance. <laughs> little teaser. Okay. So you agree? I do. All right. Alshon Jeffrey limited in Wednesday's practice. Nelson Aguilar did not practice. Oh, that's good. Jo- I mean, for Wentz. Jordan Howard limited. So Eagles still dealing with injuries and. We'll see what happens this week. We'll keep yeah. you up to date. Howard was he was in individual drills. He's still not cleared for contact. So uh, Yeah. At, and uh, they signed a Jai, which meant they might have believed Howard's injury could last more than a week. Sure. Emmanuel Sanders, Debo Samuel, and George Kittle were sidelined for Wednesday's practice. Kyle Shanahan says all of them might be game time decisions. And do they're a Sunday night, aren't they? They're at the F. Or noon. No, no the, the, the Sunday night, night is, is Green Bay and San it's Francisco. Yeah, it's the night oh, game. Oh, yeah. Shoot, yes, you're yeah. right. So that is oh, most oh, unfortunate. No. Oh no! If you are relying on Debo or I, mean, I, I think Debo is going to play, and I think that on the basis that he hurt the shoulder, came out and played the remainder of the game against Arizona. Sanders is more questionable to me as is Kittle because they've both missed some time. Are you willing to pivot to a player that has scored in three consecutive games named Kendrick Bourne, wide receiver for the 49ers? Are you willing to pivot to him just so that you can, you know, Me. I am not. I am not. Two, you know, we just mocked the Arizona Cardinals rightly. So, he scored in three straight games. Two of those three games were against the Arizona Cardinals. One of them wasn't. Sure. I'm sure he'll have other touchdown games in his career, but I'm not going to Kendrick Bourne in this matchup. And and you know, speaking of George Kittle, I don't expect him to <clears throat> You don't expect George Kittle oh, to play. That's correct. I don't expect George Kittle to play, in which case, because it's Sunday night, you have to have that decision probably made. Like, I I am willing, unless, you know, obviously tomorrow, if he gets in a surprising full practice and the, the expectations change, I am willing to play someone in my Sunday morning game as opposed to waiting to pivot to Dwelly or someone in the Monday night game. So does that answer Brooks's question here? Brooks has his own little selfish uh, start-sit question in here. Oh, yeah. He says Kittle, Dwelly, so basically Kittle with the Dwelly insurance, or Cam and Brate, just start Brate in the morning. Is that right, Brooks? Yes, is sir. Is that your situation? It sure is. Well. Wow. I would go uh, – I, I would go the Kittle Dwelly route. I my my belief is that Kittle, if he plays, is great in any situation. So follow the practice reports. Maybe pivot if if something changes. Now but. Cameron Brait, with OJ Howard getting benched for his absolute ridiculous half catch Harlem Globe trot around the back, ends up being a fumble. Cameron Brait, for for those who did not pay attention, ended up with fourteen <laughs> targets. This past week, 10 for 73. It was a weird game, though. I read through his last two years game log, and he doesn't do this. So I'm not chasing Cameron Bray. He doesn't, but he did. Yes. When when I say that I'm willing to play someone on Sunday versus waiting for Monday, that doesn't include Cameron Bray. I'm I'm not chasing. I think there are better options. I'm saying if you had a Hollister um, or or if you had, you know, Vance McDonald, other options that look 
I think more promising. I would rather do that. Ryan Griffin. Yeah, Griffin for sure. Griffin right. makes sense, but if Emmanuel Sanders and Debo are out, you know, Dwelly. Yeah, he could be all right. Dwelly has not been very good. If you look at his, you know, he he is getting a few targets and doing very little with them, other than the two touchdowns against Arizona. I mean, he really didn't do much. What did he have? Like four, fourteen yards. Fourteen yards. So, but I mean, aren't you just playing touchdown roulette regardless? Yes, but uh, if you look at whether or not Jimmy Garoppolo is going to keep throwing a lot of touchdowns, I would bet that he's not versus touchdown roulette with Russell Wilson and Jacob right. Hollister or an option like that. Yeah, you're playing touchdown roulette with all these guys. I just don't believe that Garoppolo plays Arizona this week. No, but he plays the fifth worst team against tight ends who have given up the number one, five, 11, and eight in their last four matchups. So, Are you still confident in Hollister with the activation of, of oh, Red Dead Dixon? Red Dead. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not really worried about Ed Dixon. Okay. I've, I've never been confident in Hollister yet, and I think it's to my own demise. But I, I'm just concerned about – I am confident in starting tight end for Russell Wilson. All right. Ed Dixon you're talking about? <laughs> that remains to be seen. All right, Mohamed Sanu. This was breaking news this morning. He could miss multiple weeks with a possible high ankle sprain. That's terrible news that, for a team yeah. that can't find a depth chart at wide receiver on a consistent basis. It seems like whoever they put out there gets hurt. Dorsett has been uh, a little banged up right now He's as in well. concussion protocol. They are hopeful that he will clear. But, I mean, <laughs> Nikhil Harry, are we interested in here? Yes. Okay. He had four targets, three receptions for 18 yards against Philadelphia in his debut. Interested enough the roster. Yeah, uh, you keep an eye on him, but I don't think you can put him in your lineup. Yeah, it's it's strange. It, it might be next year when you start to be able to look at him, but he was a first-round pick. We kind of dealt with this with uh, the late-season Sonny Michelle. Maybe Harry, by necessity, comes along. I don't know. Thursday night updates. Jordan Wilkins removed from the Colts injury report on Wednesday. T.Y. Hilton and Eric Ebron are listed as questionable. Our number one start sick question on the website, thefantasyfootballers.com. If you go look at the most popular start sits, it's Jordan Wilkins, Jonathan Williams. Who do you play between the two of them? You, I, I tried to get our engineer to program in uh, the whelp face mm. for me. For like for when people ask this question, oh, when I, they answer it, I just want to go. Huh? I so, don't know the way that I see this because I've I've dug deep on this as the Mac owner. I still believe Jonathan Williams is the back to own. I currently have and I'm starting out of forced necessity. Jordan Wilkins. I hope I'm wrong, but the reality is Jordan Wilkins was not healthy at all last week. Missed pretty much the entire week of practice. Didn't play. Now they haven't. They, they haven't really practiced much this week. These reports of like, oh, he's taking off the injury report. Uh, okay. They, you know, walk through Wednesday. They played today on a short week. I just can't imagine that he's super healthy now. Like in, just instantly removed because he's off of an injury removed. report. I mean, I, I hope so. But I'm still rolling with Jonathan Williams over Jordan Wasn't Wilkins. James Conner removed from the injury report last week, Mike? He was. Okay. I lean Jonathan Williams. I won't be surprised if you are unhappy in both circumstances. Yeah. That, that Jonathan Williams picks up, you know, 55 on the ground and Jordan and Wilkins, Wilkins ends up with touchdown. like 19 yards and a touchdown. It's not looking as clear. And then Naeem Hines will be working in the passing game. Basically, you're looking at three players playing running back for one team on Thursday night. And you could take your shot. But confidence has got to be dwindling. Very low. The uh, number four start sick question on the website, Naeem Hines versus Jonathan Williams. Mike, you're on the Hines side. Well, I'm, I'm just on the Hines side of I know what his role is. And there is – Just like, fair. Just trying to look at the game script. It's very possible that the Houston Texans get out to a lead. And then if that happens, then all the Wilkins and all the Williams owners in the land are super frustrated and disappointed – because it will be Naheem Hines. Yeah, no doubt about it. News and Notes is always brought to you by the Sleeper app. Don't forget about Foot Clan game day alerts at jointhefoot.com. The latest, uh, the actives, inactives on Sunday morning. Mike is also live with Sunday Live one hour before uh, kickoff. Yes, so don't miss that. You can follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers, and we'll let you know when he goes live. Yep, before we move into the forecast, I want to thank today's sponsor, 
Pepsi. Pepsi <laughs> takes all NFL celebrations to the next level. Hail Mary touchdowns, defensive stops on the goal line. Uh, your your team winning at the the buzzer of overtime with a field goal kick. And you know what I've learned, Jason? What? I'm starting to celebrate the small things. Yeah, you got to you got to celebrate the small things. One in because I'm not an NFL player. Right. So I, I I'll never know. You don't you're not you going to win get a to, Super Bowl. You don't get to celebrate big no. big things. But you know what happened today? On on my uh my Money Dynasty League, Ryan Griffin, tight end for the Jets, he was there. I all I could do was throw a dollar bid on him. Oh. Boom. You got, I got Ryan Griffin. That's a Pepsi. Oh, you know I grabbed the Pepsi and was celebrating that moment. I got the kids into bed on time last night. No, you didn't. Get that Pepsi. You know you got to get that Pepsi. Crack it open. It doesn't matter if it's 9 o'clock at night. It was a victory, <laughs> and you take your small. He went to bed right afterwards. <laughs> you take. Your... I fell asleep halfway through the Pepsi. Okay. It was a delicious way to yeah, fall asleep. Yeah, yeah. Look, you... Pepsi, they take it to the next level, and Pepsi is the official sponsor of the NFL, and they remind you to always be celebrating. This episode is also brought to you by Amazon Logistics. Right now, Amazon is looking for delivery service partners, entrepreneurs who can start their own package delivery business and build a motivated team of drivers to operate delivery routes in the community. As a delivery service partner, you get access to a full suite of resources, including training, on-demand support, and exclusive deals on equipment like Amazon-branded vehicles and industry-grade handheld devices. If you are passionate about hiring and coaching great teams, this is a great opportunity for you. To see if you have what it takes to become an Amazon delivery service partner, go to logistics.amazon.com. That's L-O-G-I-S-T-I-C-S dot Amazon dot com. Fantasy Forecast. All right, we're into the forecast. Let's start with the Buccaneers taking on the Falcons, both teams, three and seven, divisional game. Falcons, four point favorites. It's a 51 point over under. I'll take the under in really? this one. I will. The Falcons' defense has improved dramatically since head coach Dan Quinn has given up play-calling duties. What about the note that Tampa Bay Atlanta has gone over in five of the last six? Well, then I'm in the one-sixth category, mm. I guess. Uh, maybe five of seven is on the table. <laughs> 51's a lot. 51's a lot of points. Like I said, we've had divisional games in the, in the NFC South disappoint. Last year, it was a couple of Buccaneers-Saints games that did that. In this one, I think we're looking at you know, that's just my opinion. Vegas has it at 51. Matt Ryan is Jason's start of the week. He sure is. This is going to be fantastic watching him torch a hapless Tampa Bay Buccaneers defense at home in the Dome. Jameis Winston is our consensus QB6, so both players startable this week. Winston is, while difficult to watch at times, leading the league in air yards, 17-plus fantasy points in eight straight games. I mean, For Jameis, the explanation leads the league in air yards. And interceptions. I mean, that is Jameis. I saw someone had tweeted about, like, why don't you guys talk about Jameis's turnovers ruining fantasy days? They're not. Because they don't. Yeah. yeah. He, he's, like, he's been top 10 three of the last four weeks. It ruins the fact that he should be putting up top three production. Like, if you if he stopped having minus six every single week, he, then he would be, like, not, elite not, for fantasy. Not only minus six, but minus the ability to continue on with the drive he was sure. on. Like, if he stopped throwing these interceptions, he has the ability to be a phenomenal fantasy option. Uh, but that's like, you know, that's like saying if Josh Rosen was Tom Brady and he was a different person. I mean, Jameis is who he is. <laughs> if I were you and you were me, <laughs> I'd use your body to get to the top. <laughs> <laughs> he is the quarterback nine on the year, so you can play him. Yeah. You don't have to watch. Just just take the fancy points at the end of the game. Yes. Mike, you brought this up in the studio. Ronald Jones. Starter An Ronald Jones. Anointed by head coach Bruce Arians. His snap counts have gone down three straight weeks? <laughs> yeah. Look, do you know what that means, Bruce, when you say starter? When yeah, you say when more he, carries. When he earned that job because he was in on 55% uh, of the snaps. 55! Thank you. Thank you. Look, and he put up the 18 for 67 uh, against Seattle, had uh, the two targets that week. You know, then then against Arizona, he had the eight receptions except 46% of the snaps, and he was okay. And then all the way down to 31% of the snaps. Like, that, I'm, no, I'm no wizard when it comes to the mathematics, but 
My starting running back, those that's not what I do with his offensive snaps. Thirty one percent of them. <laughs> yeah, that's not good. Peyton no. Barber had no carries last week. So what you is happening? We're getting all the Agumba Wale? They just got they really got rid of the they, they went away from the run last week in serious fashion and you know that that's the result. I that's do the think, risk with their defense. Right. And I and I yeah, and in this game, I mean Matt Ryan, he's you know, my quarterback start of the week. I think we all love him and we would all yeah, play him gonna, if he's on your roster. Destroy. And if he does destroy, this could be another game script where it is poor for uh, the running game of Tampa Bay. That being said, I do think Ronald Jones is, is startable. I don't expect them to always be going away from the run. And the Falcons have been beatable on the ground. You know, the last five games they've played, three of those games they've given up top 12 against fantasy running backs. So this, you know, I, I think Ronald Jones is a flex option this week. Devonta Freeman didn't practice on Wednesday. Brian Hill could end up the quote-unquote starter again. He did have 15 carries last week. I don't want people to ignore that. I would play Brian Hill over Ronald Jones. And he had a touchdown. Agreed. He had a touchdown that came back. He did. And there was another opportunity at the goal line that Quadri Olison ended up getting that carry with a giant hole. So the, I, I agree. Brian Hill is not dead in the water here from last week. However, this matchup on the ground has been very tough for running backs against Tampa Bay. They've, they've just been outstanding. They're number two on the year and they've played a murderer's row of great running backs. Yeah, I mean, it took uh, – you're right. I mean, Arizona they shut down. Seattle, Chris Carson they shut down. Derrick Henry they shut down. CMC had a number 15 finish. So upside I, I is would, limited. Yeah, I would play Ronald Jones over Brian Hill. Okay. we. I think Mike and I said we're on the other side. I'll just take the known opportunity. Right. I, I don't like both of these guys to, to have any kind of high-level production, but – I'll I'll gamble on the touches. At the wide receiver position, Julio's in your lineup, and my goodness, it might be the best week he, he has. Uh, 39.2 fantasy points. That's he what, better. That's what Tampa Bay is giving up on average to the wide receiver position, making them dead last in the league. It's too long since we've seen our last Julio just boom. Yeah. 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 It's, it's, not, it's not too long from now, though. I think Julio's going to have a monster game, and I would start all three of the Falcons wide receivers. Uh, Calvin Ridley is a must start to me in this matchup, but Russell Gage I, I agree. is a guy that, you know, look, you you know, you know had Mohamed Sanu in your lineup, and now it looks like he might miss a couple weeks. Russell Gage is still available on, on a lot of waivers. He also replaced Mohamed Sanu in Atlanta. Ironic. Um, and, and he can absolutely play in this game against Tampa Bay. When's the last time Julio Jones scored a touchdown? Week two or three? Three. Yeah. Come on, Julio! Yeah, he was on fire to start the year. He had Get that! We, we dubbed you Julio Touchdown Jones, which was a really difficult thing to do. Yeah, yeah, he had the job week. and yeah, it's Come the, on, Julio. We'll Let's see what go, happens. Buddy. Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, they're in your lineup. No debate there. O.J. Howard, no, no, no. No. Austin Hooper, like, is he yeah. officially out now, I'm, Brooks? Yes. yes. Okay, yeah, so he, he's out of the game. That's why I like Russell Gage more exactly. this week. Uh, and he'll have an opportunity. Jaden Graham is the backup tight end, the pass catching tight end. He was two for twenty three, and uh, <laughs> what, what, it's, look, I'm just saying he was two. For, as in, in his first real chance, he caught two passes for twenty three yards. And the reason we're mentioning Jaden Graham just one, so you know who he is. But two, the Buccaneers is the second best matchup for fantasy tight ends. I'm not advising to start him; just laying the land for people. So when when uh, Sunday rolls around. And Jaden Graham touch, catches a touchdown, and, and half the country goes, who? You know who it was. And and also so that you don't just go, oh, he's a thing now going right. forward the following week if he happens to have a good week like, against. Like DFS, you want to roll out Jaden Graham? That doesn't bother me. Well, I, I've been in enough deep dynasty leagues where there are needs at tight end. Yeah, Brooke, a spot start. So. Brooks had to pick up Dwelly off of the waiver wire last week to play him, and that certainly worked out. Brooks, was that in dynasty? Yeah. So you played – let me just get this straight. Yes. And did you win? Yes. So you played Driscoll and Dwelly. Oh, yeah. Well, you are just uh, – that's why you got engaged this week. She saw that, and she was impressed. A magic man. That was, was that what you said when you got on one knee? Did you say, I just by played the way, Driscoll. I just played Driscoll and, and Dwelly. Won. I just won with Driscoll and Dwelly. <laughs> and she said, you're the one for me? Yeah. <laughs> Actually, I got to give a really quick shout out. That was in Dynasty, but she I was up against her in a league last week, and she beat me by three points. Oh, Because you didn't have Driscoll. Yep. That's right. Dummy. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, we told you all week. <laughs> All the, right. The matchup was clear. <laughs> yeah, we knew it. All right. Dolphins at two and eight take on the Browns at four and six. The game's in Cleveland. The Browns are heavy favorites. Eleven points. It's a forty four and a half point over under. Baker. Baker's gonna be uh talked about later. But I like him. Let's yeah. put it that way. Ryan Fitzpatrick on the other side has been throwing the ball to one man, one man only. Devontae Parker, top thirty six wide receiver in seven straight weeks. You can play him. Beckham. Landry, Mm. I think you can play both players in this matchup. Yes. I think you always play Beckham with a slight dreariness to your spirit. Jarvis Landry, though, has been very good. He's actually got a higher target share in recent weeks than Beckham does, both very high. Uh, 15 red zone targets for Jarvis Landry on the year. That's tied for fifth most among wide receivers and has a very nice uh, pro football focus matchup against the cornerback. Yeah, I mean, you you could make the argument if you had to start one of these two guys that you should be starting Jarvis. He's clearly more in sync with Baker. This is a monster revenge game for Jarvis as well. Odell Beckham is the more talented, capable of just dominating a bad defense like this, um, whereas Jarvis is more of a possession guy than a real, you know, break a tackle and it's take Beasley, it for It's 80. Beasley John Brown type of, you know. Difference Ex- exactly. Them. So right now we've got Beckham ranked higher because his ceiling is higher. But I do think the floor is clearly safer for Landry, and I would love to play both these players. All right, what about Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt? Are you playing both players this week? Absolutely. Yep. Well, yeah, that, look, look, that I mean, def- Nick, that well, was definitive. I mean, Nick Chubb is he's an auto start. Miami's allowing 148 rushing yards per game. That's the second most in the NFL. Like he, he's absolutely in. Kareem Hunt, it will be highlighted at the end of the show. Well, well, well. I'm excited to have him highlighted. Mm-hmm. All right, uh, Njoku, Gasicki, uh, I, I'm not messing with either guy this week. No. Is no, it, I agree. Yeah. Is right. Njoku actually going to play? It, it's, he, might be, uh, Don't know yet. he might be watching. All right. I, I will say this. When he does play, and I've been Mr. Njoku, a lot of mentions, uh, a, lot of, a lot of tweets uh, yes. about my love for Njoku. Like when they break down, you know, word bubbles right. of all the words that Jason has said, f- somehow... Njoku's like top three. David Njoku is a really big word. But there's no way you play him this week. Even if he is active, you don't play him because it's very... I mean, you've, you've heard Kitchens talk about we don't know what kind of football shape he's in. You know, he, he could come out and end up getting 10, 15, 20% of the snaps... You, you've got to let him get back into the NFL game before you start him. Yeah, so the, the most recent news is Njoku goes through his first practice, but he's unsure if he'll play. Yep, Giants 2-8, and eight, Bears 4-6. and six. Game's got a 40.5 over under. Bears are six-point favorites at home against the Giants. Mm. It will be very difficult for Daniel Jones and company to make – uh, to, to be able to move the ball against Chicago in Chicago in this game. Uh, these are one of those you know defensive matchups where as much as I like what Daniel Jones has done periodically through the year, it's a challenge to try to wade through a very talented defense on the road. Uh, we've seen what Mason Rudolph looks like on the road. It's just difficult. So I don't have high expectations for Daniel Jones. We as a group have him as the quarterback 19 on the week. It's just not one of those streaming Daniel Jones weeks. Not with not with any confidence, no. No, certainly not against the Bears. And I, I hate to say this. I think this could be a good game for Mitchell Trubisky. Is and he the, is he gonna start? Yeah, he look, I mean, he was a full participant in Wednesday practice and the hip, while I, I don't believe it's made up, this is not an injury that should be sidelining a starting quarterback unless they're not worthy of being a starting quarterback. But if you look back at the history of, you know, the, the current Nagy Trubisky era, home games against bottom pass defenses, that's where he's thrived. That's where his giant six touchdown game comes. And so this matchup is one where you're afraid of him, but I don't think you necessarily need to be because the Giants are very poor against quarterbacks, against wide receivers. The passing game is not good, and he's at home. So this is, I think, one of those games where it's like a real prove it. You know, they he give just got up. benched. Yeah, they give up 321 yards a game on the road. That's what the giant. That's most in the NFL. So it's just, they're just sitting there for you, Mitchell. Yeah, he, he's one of those those guys that when you're in a multi quarter, you know, you're in a super flex league, and he's your third quarterback. This is a week where you go. 
I, I might be able to put him in over some of the right. other options. Montgomery did play with the hurt ankle last week. It, it was a reduction of snaps in that game. He played a tough defense. Do you roll him back out here in this one? I imagine you do. Yep. And then uh, Tariq Cohen, is he playable as well? Is he in the top 24 for you? He got he got the slight bump uh, this past week because of the David Montgomery uh, injury. His targets went up by two from the previous week. The rushing carries did go up by six. I mean, you, you saw a somewhat uptick of usage for Tariq Cohen. He did score again. I think this was his best fantasy day of the uh, of the whole year. But if David Montgomery, if you're projecting him back to his, let's see, eighty percent of his role, then no, I'm I'm out on Tariq Cohen. I think Montgomery gets into the end zone this week. It seems like a a good situation, a good setup for that. Saquon Barkley, over under one yard, over. Okay, I will. We've take, got the over. I will take the over Oof, as well. Bunch of buy copiers. <laughs> uh, do you believe in adding Wayne Gallman to your roster? Even if you don't have Saquon, yeah, just on the basis that maybe Barkley's not. If you get, if 100. you have a spot and you're looking like for a real high upside stash, and all the other handcuffs are gone, sure. Yeah, I'm uh, okay. I just I think the schedule at the end of the year we've talked about this for the Giants is pretty great. Yeah, I but, don't understand why people aren't more in on Wayne Gallman as the must add situation. I mean, he okay. So here's here's my he had, rationale. His one game, he got one game without Saquon. He's the number six uh, running back on the week. I I just think that the the offensive line, the offense as a whole, is not the one that I want to invest in. Whereas you look at a Pollard or you look at a Madison, and and not only that, but those players are more talented. Gallman's never really. But you might not get that choice. I'm just it's just whether or not you put Gallman at the back of your bench. Yeah, I mean that's a matter of who else are you dropping and do you have the luxury. I I'm not saying Wayne Gallman shouldn't be rostered. I just assume that there are better, more necessary options. For instance, would I rather have Wayne Gallman or have start setting up my playoff defense? Well, I would rather have the defense, you know, I'd rather have the Baltimore Ravens on my roster even if they're my second defense than Gallman. Well, yeah, for me, the the reason Gallman is more attractive than others is because you don't. It's not you're not just hoping for an injury blindly. Saquon Barkley is dealing with or coming up, coming off of and dealing with an injury existing. Right. So then you're not just saying I hope. It's like Tony Pollard. I, I'm adding Gallman a thousand times more than I'm adding Tony Pollard because I'm not just hoping that. You know, Zeke twists an ankle. Uh, we don't hope for that. Right. You know what I mean? I'm not preparing for that. I'm saying, oh, he already tweaked his ankle. That's kind of my my thought process. And, so thought, and Barkley, it unlikely, but just living in the world of hypotheticals and probabilities, I mean, it's me, Dave. doesn't seem like the type of guy who's going to shut Barkley down at the end of the season because it's the smart thing to do. But the Giants are out, and if you get down to those last two weeks of the season and Barkley's banged up, it's in the realm of possibilities that they just shut him down. And Zeke's not getting shut down. I, I think the reason that I I might be a little bit on the other side of the fence from you guys is because, like Saquon to me, he is a he is a trade-for candidate if your trade deadline is still open. Oh, he gosh. is a uh, – I mean, he's an answer to the beginning question. Who's going to help people win championships? I think Saquon is going to have a great rest of season, and obviously based on your oh gosh, you do not. No, I don't have confidence in his health the same way I don't in Amari Cooper right now and some of those players that I wouldn't be acquiring risk at my running back position when we haven't seen any of the Saquon upside at all uh, in quite some time. So, yeah, we do we do see things differently on that front. But we can move on to Allen Robinson, who you like very much and I would start this week. I sure do. I mean, look, if I actually speak kindly towards Trubisky for the first time ever – then that's going to coincide with his wide receiver <laughs> one in a plus matchup at home, and we'll talk about him later. Do we make anything of Anthony Miller's 11 targets this past week, or was that just a product of Jalen Ramsey on Allen Robinson? It's never benefited fantasy owners to make much of Anthony Miller or Taylor Gabriel's targets on any given week because it, the following week you are left wanting. It's certainly possible that Miller has a nice week, but I would say it's just as possible that Gabriel leads the team in receiving yards and touchdowns and everything this week. So, I don't know. You want to ride the Mitchell Express? Not really. All right, off a cliff. <laughs> Golden Tate, Darius Slayton, 
Sterling Shepard's still in concussion protocol. Yeah, I'd prefer not to play them this week. Tough matchup on the road. The Bear, uh, the Bears defense giving up 21.2 fantasy points per game to opposing wideouts. That's not a lot to go around. No. Nope. Evan Ingram, we expect him to play? I don't. No, I expect him to be out. That's he was, the opposite. Yeah, he didn't participate in practice Wednesday or Thursday. Some of the beat reporters are saying that would be the surprise of the week if he were to play. All right, Panthers, Saints. Panthers at 5-5, five and five, Saints at 8-2. and two. The game's in New Orleans, and the Saints are 9.5-point favorites. It's a 47-point over-under. Uh, Kyle Allen, you know, I was looking at <laughs> touchdown-to-interception ratios over the last handful of weeks, and Kyle Allen is at the basement. He's thrown six touchdowns, nine interceptions. It has not been smooth sailing. They're back at 5-5. Five and five. They're on the road against the Saints. A very good defense. Who you should be playing in fantasy this week. Yeah, who you should be playing in fantasy. Um, the one thing I'll say is that Kyle Allen's lack of uh, production has not translated to a lack of production for his number one wide receiver. DJ Moore has been exceptional. He's actually the target leader over the last three weeks. He's on pace for 150 targets. And this is all of his production has come without scoring. So you have a very safe baseline with some upside if DJ Moore finds his way into the end zone. Clearly a better play than, than Curtis Samuel. Uh, Curtis Samuel is he, – he has to have a touchdown. If, if Curtis Samuel doesn't score, then you're unhappy. Yeah, that's fair. That, that being said, Curtis Samuel seems to get the targets uh, uh, inside the five-yard yard line. From, uh, from what I've seen, uh, Marshawn Lattimore is still not practicing for the Saints, so that is good news for DJ Moore. Sure. Sure. Yeah, it's going to be uh, – I think it's going to be a, a whooping in this one. I really do. Christian McCaffrey, though, has shown that when whooped, he's still the number one fantasy wide receiver on the week. He was the running run back. Yeah, he was the – Sorry, running back. Uh, I believe he was the running back of the week last week, and their team scored three points, got blown out. That's – how's that possible? I don't know. Christian well, McCaffrey. 11, 11 catches? Yeah, game uh, you know? script proof. It actually is a perfect match for what Saquon did last year, right? He was a top right. three guy on – well, it's beat up every week, but seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven receptions. It's ironic. I was I was remembering back to early off season when we were debating the the top guys and whether Christian was there, and looking at the splits last year when Cam was out, how much better Christian McCaffrey was, and the argument against Christian McCaffrey because you know Cam's back, but now Cam's been gone. And it's like, oh yeah, this is just it's the Christian McCaffrey show. All right, Alvin Kamara. He's my number one running back on the week. Yes. The Panthers' defense, not good against the run. He's got back on track a little bit last week. We talked about Tampa, right, slowing down running backs. The Kamara got some work done against them last week. Yeah, Kamara did. And Latavius Murray, in an actual positive game script, got back on the field where, in the, where they got boat raced by Atlanta in Kamara's first return. I mean, Latavius Murray barely, barely saw the field. Back up to double-digit carries. Very, very plus matchup for running backs against Carolina. I think if you are desperate that you can flex Latavius Murray. Yeah, Carolina's giving up the most fantasy points to the running back position over the last month. Um, I'm, I that, think you've got to be That includes pretty, the Brian Hill shutdown. Yeah, I, I think you you know, you know, have to be a little bit desperate for Murray. That's but what I said. But I obviously Kamara is, is going to feast. How? Would you rather start Kamara or McCaffrey in this matchup, Mike? Because I'm I'm on McCaffrey. Uh, it is on Kamara. I mean, these are these Man. are you're going to start both, but I'm just curious. Pick one, McCaffrey, Michael Thomas. Holy moly, how good is this guy, Mike? On the, you missed Monday's show. I said he was somebody that probably should have gotten an apology on an apology episode, just from the fantasy community doubting his you know upper echelon status. He was drafted to be. Not quite in the range of... I mean, Beckham. Beckham was drafted ahead of Thomas right. everywhere. Here he is on pace for 150 receptions. Re not targets. No, receptions. Re 181 targets. 1,824-yard uh, pace, eight touchdown pace. His consistency, if you look at this, you know, the next the next handful of players, Evans, Godwin, Cooper, Chark, that, those are the next four on the list of, of run, uh, wide receivers. Michael Thomas has never finished outside the top 24. In fact, in the last six games played, he's been a top seven receiver in five of them. He's unbelievable because you have crazy safe floor 
and monster upside. He is the dominant wide receiving core. He he is the wide receiving core. Right. For Drew Brees, it's everything you ever want. Although I will say this, he is also on pace for negative 14 rushing yards. Oh, gosh. on the season. That's so he a does, he does have a weakness. By the way, he will that would be the NFL all-time record. If he gets 150 the record is 143 by Marvin Harrison. So, so he's, the, he's on pace okay. to break it. We've still got several games left. Of and he the probably season. wants to break it. Oh, I'm sure he does. But does he break it? I think he does. Well, considering he had to do most of this work with Teddy Bridgewater, and in the three games that Drew Brees has actually been back, he's averaging nearly 11 receptions and 126 yards. Yeah, it's gone up. Yeah, yeah. the three games. You want to know the three-game pace? 171 yeah. receptions. I think oh, that's he, nice to know. I think he breaks it, yes. All right, but but still only 187 targets. He's just catching every oh, single target. That's a 91 percent catch rate over the last three games with Drew Brees. There's something nice about a player that gets paid massive amounts of money and then comes out and breaks records. Yeah, that's just a neat thing to see. He's so dedicated to his craft and so good. And I, there are certain players that are just you, you play the Saints, you tell yourself to stop Michael Thomas, and you cannot do it. It is not possible to do. So, Greg Olson, do you play him in this game? Jared Cook. Which which guy do you like more at tight end? I like Greg Olson more than Jared Cook just based on the, the, the matchup and the needs. Greg Olson's been a little bit more involved, and the Panthers are really good against tight ends so far, only giving up 6.9 fantasy points per game on the season. I mean, Cook's been pretty good. Oh, sh yeah. Like, he, I mean, he was my start of the week last week. Like, I'm not anti-Cook on this take. His last four games, tight end 5, tight end 6, tight end 11, tight end 10. I mean, he's been – Absolutely playable. Uh, and and I think you can start him, but if you're comparing him to Greg Olson, I would prefer Greg Olson in this matchup. There are tight end four and five, respectively, which means you're starting both of these guys. All right, the Raiders at six and four take on the Jets at three and seven. The Raiders are three point favorites on the road. It's a 46 and a half point over under. The, the Raiders are in a divisional battle here. And are you laughing? At, what are you laughing at? Oh, oh the editor, our editor in chief, Kyle the Borbor, the Borgogan. He left a very oh, nice oh, note. Oh, oh, I see it for this matchup. He has dubbed this the black hole versus the bee hole. Oh mm, my goodness! Very well done. I, you know, he does from time to time give us movie titles for these <laughs> games, and I, for one, love that one. I'm gonna go watch this movie. I mean, this is an exciting. Uh, I mean, I'm the black not, hole versus the bee hole. I'm not watching this I don't movie. Know if this I'm not, movie's available in regular stores, Jason. I'm not watching this movie based upon He's title. He's Dolby Vision 3D. I, I am watching this, oh, this movie. Oh, this is 4D. Yeah. Based upon my belief that this could be a really fun game. The Oakland Raiders. Based off. on the title, it should be a stinker. <laughs> oh, that's that's very fair. Yeah. But I'll, the, I'll be here all week. Well done. <laughs> the Raiders are. Uh, an underrated offense. I mean, they've they've been a pretty darn good offense this year. And I felt like saying thank you to that when you said it, as though I am Derek Carr, as yeah. though that's who well, I am. You are. You have been the the Derek Carr, the respect uh, the yeah. respecter, apologist. Yeah, apologist. Um, there we go. Respect. Truther is what you were looking for. Oh, yeah, but, no. but, but, but don't no, get no. me. I don't want to be that. No, far. See, I didn't. Go, I didn't want to go that far. But apologist is right. is the correct term. He's been a top twelve quarterback three of the last four weeks. If the Raiders win this game, which they're favored to do, you you will have the seven and four Raiders facing the seven and four Chiefs next week for the division lead. Oh, Gruden! Which is a uh, it is a testament to Gruden. It's a testament to Carr. They had to pivot away from Antonio Brown moments before the season started. Here's Hunter Renfro making his mark in recent weeks. Darren Waller, Tyrell Williams. You know how the Bears are bad, and they need, <laughs> and they need a quarterback, and they're gonna have a poor record and a nice pick. Mm -hmm. That pick goes to the Raiders. Oh, come that, on. That's the is Raiders. That still from the Mac trade? Yeah, that is. The <laughs> the, the Bears' first-round pick goes to this uh, possible 7-14. and 14. Wow. And the NFL, their trades mimic sometimes what you see in Dynasty and Keeper Leagues in Fantasy where – You think someone smoked someone and you got it wrong. Yeah, Mike, a few years back, what was the Aaron Jones trade oh, you made yeah. with Al Borland? Uh, it, the, it was right when Aaron Jones broke out because – Two guys in front of him got hurt. Yeah. And so I traded Aaron Jones away for Crabtree. Crabtree. And who? a one. And a one, yeah. 
It yeah. was at that time, and it's so weird to even think about it now because you forget where you were at. At that time, it was laughable. Like it Crabtree was, was the thousand yard receiver. I would have rather had Crabtree than Aaron Jones. Right. It seemed at that time, and then you got a one, and now it's like, oh, Crabtree just fell off the face of the earth. The one turned into, I believe, Royce, Royce Freeman. Freeman. So it's like, yeah, that I'll, I'll, take, I'll take Aaron yeah. Jones for sure. Just another little uh, addition to the diatribe about vetoes. You don't know how things are going to end up. None of us do. And that trade was made by two parties that yep. wanted to make the trade. And we nearly ridiculed Al Borland out of the studio. Uh, you had some issues right, with uh, depression for months after that. Mm -hmm. And then you won the trade. Yep. So, and then just another fun fact. I'm looking at the the stream finder. The oak. What? Ooh. I'm just laughing because Brooks added a little note to our doc, and he said it says this. I'm gonna read it verbatim. B hole equals Adam Gaze for new listeners. <laughs> Only Brooks wants to make sure the B hole is as clear as possible. Adam Gaze, okay. the head coach for the Jets. If you don't know who that is, is a butthole. <laughs> So now Language, you're Jason. now you're in on the joke <laughs> because that is just the well, that's what it seems. And with the Quincy and Nunwa little diatribe, it just seems like you know, yeah. butthole confirmed. Uh, how speaking to how back to fantasy? How uh, fantasy DSTs have done against the Oakland Raiders? Yeah, I know. I was shocked. They bad. The, the The Raiders have only allowed one top. 12 performance. Oh, Nay, yeah. one top 13 performance. How many teams... And that was week two against the Chiefs. How many teams in the NFL are there where they have only had one top 12 performance or, or fewer? Um, there aren't any others. I think there's only the one. There is only the Oakland Raiders. I had the Jets as my defense, and when I looked into it, I was like, wow, you don't really want to play against the Raiders. It's not that... He never throws interceptions. And he, they don't take sacks. It's not that they don't, that they smoke you. You always think you don't want to play against the high-powered offense. But you also don't want to play against teams that just don't give up anything. They are very, the, the way they've won this year has very much been the tortoise hare uh, yeah. example. They have tortoised you. It, with, I would say walrus you. They have they're fair. They the walrus and the hare. The famous children's story, the walrus and the hare, and the walrus goes really slow, uh, stops for a dip, and then they end up winning the Isn't race. Is it the walrus and the carpenter? Well, that, that, now I'm now I'm really lost. That's from Alice in Wonderland. Mm. Oh, okay. Isn't the it the carpenter and the <laughs> <laughs> But Derek Carr, I mean I think he was eighty five percent completion last week, something like that. Josh Jacobs Top five in touches over the last since week four. Top uh, ninety two point three rushing yards per game. Tyrell Williams lined up for success against this Jets defense, giving up thirty four fantasy points a game to wide receivers. Love Tyrell this week. Yeah, I think I think you can flex Hunter Renfro as well. Darren Waller, you're probably gonna play him, but the Jets actually don't give up a ton of points to the tight end, and Waller's been a little slow. The Waller risk, but that's yeah. how you know. Tried and true, you go a little slow, and then you beat the hair in the end, right? Mm -hmm. but that's how the Walrus run the race. Yeah, on the other on the other side, Ryan Griffin, uh, you know, he's he's been on the field, he's been running a ton of routes, and he's had so many good finishes. You don't know this, Jay, but in our start to the week section coming up shortly, I had not only written in Ryan Griffin, but I had written in you know five or six like bullet points as to why I like him this week. Sweet. And then I, I pivoted away, but it seems that he you, is my you start agree. of the week. Yeah, yes. Uh, so I, I think you could definitely play him in this matchup. Oakland has been uh, horrendous against tight ends. I do think the game hits the over. I like more than 46 and a half too. points in this one. 100%. And uh, let's put it this way all of us have a start of the week on the Jets side, despite the Raiders playing well. Sam Darnold, uh, he's put together a few good starts. Lev Bell, he's going to be in your lineup. So I think we think Sam Darnold can be a spot start if you need it. And then Jamison Crowder's just been a monster. Uh, His target share. He's automatic, man. He, Yeah, he, he's not top 10 super sexy, but he's he's great for your fantasy. Not league. everybody can be top 10 super sexy, Mike. I know. Look, as one in the top 10, I feel bad for you guys. Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's pronounced crowd ah. <laughs> Oh, bring it too back, long. baby. It has been too long. All right, let's get into those starts. Starts of the week. All right, let's kick it off with 
the quarterback position. Mike, why don't you take it? It's Sam Darnold for me from streamer to starter. Back-to-back QB7 performances for Sam Darnold. He had the four touchdowns last week in Oakland. They're giving up the most 20-plus yard pass plays in the league, which is, I mean, it's very interesting considering how well they've done against opposing DSTs. But, look, Sam Darnold, I, I think they're finally getting things figured out with with – focusing on Jamison Crowder and Le'Veon Bell should be able to get it done this week as well in the in the passing game so I like Sam Darnold there have been a handful of weapons that have kind of you know Darnold has used Ryan Griffin is one of them uh Crowder you mentioned yeah, Griffin, Demarius yes. Thomas and Robbie Anderson's always a threat for the one big play the one big score all right my my quarterback start of the week is Baker Mayfield this week against Miami he just put up his first top 10 performance in five weeks. Yes, Baker. And he did it against the Pittsburgh defense. He's now home against Miami. Miami just got shredded by Josh Allen for a number one fantasy finish. Uh, Baker has finished 14th, 13th, 9th, 9th in the last three weeks, and that's against Denver, Buffalo, and Pittsburgh. I like where that's trending. It's going up. Well, kind of. All right, my start of the week is going to be Matt Ryan. It has been five weeks since we have seen him inside the top 15 at quarterback. He got injured. He was out a couple games. He came back. He's been Are you okay. counting some of the weeks that he was out that we didn't yeah, see Yeah, that's him? why I said he was injured. He missed a game. I'm saying it's been a while because when he came back, he's been the quarterback 15 two weeks in a row. It's just funny to be like, last week, the dude didn't even show up on the fantasy rankings. Or, yeah, he was on the bye week. But he didn't do anything. Fair. <laughs> My point is, you might be forgetting that before that, six weeks ago, he was coming off of back-to-back top two games, and now you're playing the Tampa Bay Buccaneers at home in a dome where it's been since you know since week three. There's only been one game where Tampa Bay hasn't given up a top 12 quarterback performance. So are you willing to, because Matt Ryan is, is widely started, are you willing to go on the record with like a top five guarantee? Yeah, he's absolutely a top five okay. quarterback this week. A water bet against yourself, really? Yeah, I'll, I'll pour oh! water on myself for first ever. Water bet. <laughs> All right. Well, I, I, I say that because I'm making the same sort of pronouncement with my running back start of the week. So I'll kick it off. It's Lev Bell against Oakland. He has yet to have, this Lev Bell, this first round pick, he has yet to have a single finish inside the top eight all year long, and I am calling. So are you willing to make a water bet for top eight against yourself, Andy? For yes! top, top eight? Top five. What? I did five. No, no, you got it in the in the print. You're calling for the I top know, five. I know, but he brought up top eight. Uh, so I I can't, well, uh, you haven't hit the button. Top five. Top five. <laughs> Water bet. Absolutely. Oakland <laughs> These is... These are such stupid bets for you. <laughs> Oakland vulnerable against the run. They've given up two top five performances in the last five weeks. So, you know, I've got a shot to win this one. And they're the bottom ha- in the bottom half in total points given up to running back the last three weeks. 17 carries, 18 carries, 18 carries. I think he scores a couple times in this game. I, so. feel, like, I feel like I get a cup of water on myself no matter what. Because if I win, I want to water someone. But mm. you know what I mean. But all- if I lose, I deserve to get watered. You could just do like a celebration watering then. Yeah. Oh, so it's just- a Pepsi. Yeah. So just- oh, yeah. A Pepsi. Oh, just <laughs> dump it over my head. Yeah, I'm so. That good. could be your Instagram post. There. You- oh, ju- oh. Whoa, dude. whoa! Don't you don't, don't want to spoil, spoil the post? It's coming. Sorry, I know it's coming soon. It's coming very soon. Check it out. Stay tuned. Look, ladies and gentlemen, I've seen him in a in a dark room, just in the corner, with the thinking cap on. Mm. It's gonna be motionless. Amazing. Because of the Instagram post? Because that's going to be so incredible? The pressure upon this man. It's coming. It's going to be so good. Sure it is. All right. Uh, Mike, your running back start of the week? My running back start of the week, it's Kareem Hunt. The Cleveland Browns have found their third passing option. It is Kareem Hunt. He's averaged eight and a half targets since coming back into the league. That's a 24% target share he gets to take on Miami that juicy matchup eighth against fantasy running backs yes Nick Chubb is an an automatic but I think Kareem Hunt is a safe low-end RB2 start this week all right Jason who's your running back my running back we talked about at the top of the show it's Philip Lindsay I believe that he is a phenomenal running back in real life 
Buffalo is a team that can be beaten on the ground, and now the ground has you have to. Yeah, you you have to because it's very difficult. Unless to, you're Devonte Parker, th yes, to throw well, on the elites can beat them on yeah. Buffalo. And um, you know what happened for the Broncos coming out and saying before the game, you know, reporters saying they expect it to be the Philip Lindsay show. Sixteen carries to eight for Royce Freeman. Uh, you know that's the the first time that he had over 60% of the snap. He's been in the 40s, and then he was a 64% of snaps. Him in the league dog role against Buffalo is going to be fantasy success. All right, Mike, uh, you want to kick off the wide receivers? I will. My wide receiver start of the week. It's Tyrell Williams. This is just a situation of great matchup. Uh, his quarterback, Derek Carr, is playing pretty well. Pretty well. He, and he gets the New York Giants. They're giving up the second most points to the fantasy wide receiver position is as simple as that okay i'm gonna go with calvin ridley with a wink at russell gage so both of those guys startable uh, you know when you're when you're in a situation and you face tampa bay you smile yeah you smile the last three week the last three weeks receivers were first second and 11th in total fantasy points on <laughs> the week 11 that's yeah that's pathetic uh, they're the just they're just the best team to stream wide receivers against. I'm playing Russell Gage in our league of record right now. I don't know what's going on with Robert Woods, and I don't know if I care with them facing Baltimore on Monday night. I don't know if I have the luxury of waiting and seeing. So Russell Gage is going to climb into it's going to climb into my lineup. I like it. I wish he was on waivers because then he would climb into my lineup. All right. Um, I am going to be starting Allen Robinson. He has had a good season. You know, uh, there, there's been a lot of disappointing games recently, but he's still on pace for 138 targets, over 90 receptions, and the matchup against the Giants is great. They are the 31st best team <laughs> at stopping wide receiver. Um, and, and the Trubisky problem that is clearly the problem for Allen Robinson, I brought this up, uh, you know, in the matchup, the splits – for Trubisky, when he plays a top 10 passing defense, he averages 10.4 fantasy points per game. When he faces a bottom 10 passing defense, he averages 26.5 fantasy points per game. So, and Allen Robinson, he averages two over two targets more a game at home, over three more fantasy points a game at home. And Pro Football Focus has him with the number one cornerback wide receiver matchup discrepancy against DeAndre Baker. I like Allen Robinson to uh, have a get-right game this week. All right, Mike, you're up. My tight end start of the week is Vance. Yep, yep, yep. Did you already go over Tyrell? Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Thanks for listening. Yeah, I skipped right ahead. My bad. Go ahead. <clears throat> My tight end start <laughs> of the week, it's Vance McDonald. The, he is a product of necessity this week against the Cincinnati Bengals who – Look, Darren Waller had a fine game. Mark Andrews has absolutely dominated them. Juju is hurt. Deontay is hurt. And, fellas, generally speaking, what happens when you three see three sevens in a row? Uh, you win. That's called a jackpot. Yeah, buddy. Now, he's had three games with seven targets in a row. I don't want to read into that, but I'm going to do it anyways. <laughs> so, so, so let's go. Let's go. Vance McDonald <laughs> cashes this weekend. Because who else are they going to throw it to? Hey, there's not a lot of options. And, and, and on top of that, honestly, the last two weeks, 97% of the snaps. 96% of the snaps. Like He's now, the, the past two weeks, he has been a full, full-time player for the Steelers. I'm going Dallas Goddard. Tight end for the Philadelphia Eagles against Seattle. Back to back. He's a top 12 tight end. Three of the last four starts. I found this little red zone report stat gym yesterday. Where'd you find it? Uh, on our website, thefantasyfootballers.com. Nice. There's cool. a premium Foot Clan uh, report. Oh, nice. But red zone targets. I wanted to look at Ertz versus Goddard, right? Both tight ends. Well, Ertz is winning nine red zone targets to six over Goddard. <laughs> but then I dug in a little bit. I looked at those 10 zone targets. You get really down. That's, that's a little closer. Uh -huh. Well... Dallas Goddard's got four of those targets. Ertz only one. They look to Goddard. You saw it last week in the New England game. They look to him inside the 10 zone. He's averaging 5.6 targets a game. I will suck those up as a uh, tight end starved person. I need those targets. Seattle's giving up the eighth most fantasy points to the tight end position. Also, let's just throw this out there because, you know, in the offseason, I was Mr. Dallas Goddard. He's a really good player. Yes. Dallas Goddard 
was drafted to be a star tight end. This wasn't just, oh, he's a backup. Everyone was so upset when he went to the Eagles because it's like, what? I wanted to have Dallas Goddard as this great fantasy option. Now he's a backup. You, you're starting to see him more involved, and he can he can dominate. Uh, my tight end start of the week is going to be the Ryan Griffin waiver wire wonder. Everybody is in on this week. I think there are reasons for that. He's been a top 12 guy three of his last six weeks. So I mean, look, that's half the time good, half the time bad. That's basically what you get with the tight end position. But two of those three, he was the number one tight end. He's got big game potential, and now he plays against Oakland Raiders, who are bottom five against tight end. They often are beaten there. It's just a nice combination where Andy and I both see this game hitting the over, and Ryan Griffin should be involved if there is a lot of points scored. The Walrus and the Carpenter by Lewis Carroll. It is a narrative story poem. It has also been called a nonsense poem, meaning that impossible things happen in it. That's Bra- nonsense. Bravo, Mike. Thank you. And it's uh, also some people call this a nonsense podcast. Also, read a book. <laughs> Wait, is I, that to us? It's just to the uncultured swine that I'm surrounded oh, by. Oh, my goodness. The Carpenter and the Gardener. Oh, did you find another one so I we did. can trickle down the road? <laughs> yes. Uh, I hope you're ready for this. The Gardener and the Minshew. Jason Moore's Ironclad, Locked and Loaded, 100% guaranteed Boom Boom Kicker of the Week. Look, Butker is on by and you don't know what to do. Pick up and play the Falcons, Young Hoku. That's what we're doing in League One. We are an excellent recovery. I don't think you'll actually get to see the face because on the YouTube there was a graphic, but... For the first five seconds of the intro, Jason's face was one of pure panic. Well, I was in the like middle. like a man scrambling through his papers to yes. find something. I was in the, the middle. The tax returns are here somewhere. Of searching for the gardener and when I heard the drop and I was uh, like, oh, I'm supposed to do something somewhere else on this computer. Uh, that's up. It, you, you did it well. I, I was playing Pong. By the way, what's our current record in League One? Some, uh, the people want to know. I will are pull we it up. seven and three? I believe we are seven and three. I think we are in second place. Uh, we're doing well. We project to be in the playoffs, and, and we're going to take it down. And then sleeper, we are now nine and. We are okay. I'm like in my head, I'm like, fellas, the seven three does not make sense. Uh, you are right with that. So because eight and three. We are eight and eight three. And, three. Yes. and then in uh, sleeper, we're nine and two right now. Yeah, so sleeper, we're, we're locked into the playoffs. We will be playing for that charity money. Oh yeah. Yeah. Sweet, yeah. sweet charity money. And we got some people playing very, very hard in that sleeper bowl. Yes. So it's going to be fun. All right. We want to, uh, we're going to close this thing out by thanking our studio sponsor, Pristine Auction. A uh, very, very special, oh. very, very excellent auction yesterday. Josh, Josh. Stallion. Yes. Yeah, a little Josh Allen jersey, $78.39. That's good for a quarterback. Quarterback jerseys, you got to pay the price. You want that ball thrower. <laughs> that's what they say mm-hmm. use the code ballers at pristineauction.com to browse their sports memorabilia and that'll do it for us we'll do more fantasy forecasts tomorrow ballers on a budget i'm gonna go pick up the gardener and the tree oh okay thank you that's it that's thanks jason you're welcome goodbye Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. Reminder, Foot Clan, that Pepsi takes all NFL celebrations to the next level, whether it's a Hail Mary touchdown, a defensive stop on the goal line, a Super Bowl win, a division win, who cares? Maybe it was your first win of the season. Celebrate! Cincinnati, I'm talking to you. You, you, you think the Pepsis won't be flowing if they're if, able to do that? If they actually win, Pepsis will be everywhere. It's just a Pepsi bath? Yes. The absolute Pepsi bath. Look, Pepsi, the official sponsor of the NFL, reminds you to always be celebrating. Grab a delicious Pepsi today.